It's been several days since I last worked on the bus. My brother in the States was having surgery and I headed down there to help out for a few days. It coincided nicely with a uh, repair to the transmission, a little leak around the seal where the uh, shifting rod enters it, I believe. Uh, a honest and small town transmission specialist where my son lives uh, did the repair for just about $200, which uh, compared to the other uh, fees I've paid for repairs is eminently reasonable. The task I want to address today is removing what remains of these seat legs. It was expedient to use a sawzall and just cut them off down low like that to get the seats out, but I have to remove the remnants of them as well. They're sharp, they're a tripping hazard, and they sandwich the old flooring down to the metal floor and will make me unable to remove the floor until they all come up. This exercise requires that the bolt head be clamped down or held stationary while I go underneath the bus and unscrew the nut, or vice versa. I have one set of vice grips, and while I was in the States, um, Harbor Freight, I got another three for $10, so I can clamp four in place inside the bus before I disappear under the bus and see if I can find the corresponding nuts. Here they are, clamped in place, top side. Now I head underneath the bus to see what the situation is there. It may well be that these are sitting on top of the gas tank and are therefore inaccessible from below, and these will be a set that I'm grinding off. I hope there aren't too many of those. I'm under the bus. This is the fuel tank. And as I feared, the nuts corresponding with uh, the bolts I have clamped above are right over the fuel tank and inaccessible. I've started working from the front of the bus to the back to see if the access is any better. Here are some, they're over the rail so I can't get a uh, socket wrench on them easily, but I can get these vice grips on some and see if that I can then remove the bolt from above. Success. Then I go back under and clamp down its neighbor. One down, way too many to go. The vice grips often lose their grip under the bus and fall to the ground and I have to crawl under and clamp them back on again. I speculate that it may have to do with the uh, ferocity of this driver and so I'm trying a, a more gentle approach, turning the bolt by hand. See if that makes it more likely that the vice grip stays in place below until we hear the clunk that means it's finally fall into the ground. Love the sound of that clunk. I think I found a rhythm using a pair of vice grips below and socket wrench above. I should stress that this is the solo method. If you had a buddy to be down under holding on to the vice grip so they couldn't fall off, I would have to make the process go faster. But this works. Some of the nuts under the bus that you need to grab onto are quite recessed. Here I found it helpful to use the smallest of the vice grips because frankly I don't have the strength to hold the heaviest one at arm's length, maneuver it into place, and clamp it shut. I also don't do side-by-side -side ones at the same time. It's just too crowded, so I'll do one of a pair uh, and then skip one and do one of another pair and then come back and complete the job. I was able to remove quite a few of the feet by clamping onto the nut corresponding to each bolt under the bus. But there's still a couple dozen or more that I'm going to have to grind off. 
grinding bolt heads inside the bus is something that can be done on a cold or rainy day. It's a warm sunny day now and we'll have fewer of those as we move through October. So I'm going to turn my attention to removing this student pedestrian safety swing arm. And the stop sign. I've never operated the swing out arm on this bus. I believe it's uh, actuated pneumatically using the air pressure system on the bus. So far in the disassembly, I've done nothing that might compromise the air system. But I'm about to disconnect the hose back here. It's Canadian Thanksgiving holiday Monday and I want to spend some time with family, but I am going to take the time to remove the swing out stop sign. The mechanism seems to have a lot in common with the swing out arm I just got off the front bumper, including a rubber diaphragm here, which air pressure pushes out, causing the sign to swing out. I've removed the four nuts that should permit me to wiggle the stop sign loose. These lights are illuminated when the stop sign is deployed. I'm assuming this wire is what sends the electricity to it. If I thought that it was terminating in a switch, I would have to investigate whether it was normally open or normally closed and attempt to replicate that to not uh, disturb any interlock that would keep the bus from starting, for example. But I think, in fact, this is just sending power to the lights. So what I'm going to do is uh, cap the wire or make sure that the two aren't shorted. I see as I swing out the stop sign that there are electrical feeds for the top and for the bottom flasher, which are separate. I take that to be because they flash in an alternating way. Not sure about that, but that would be difficult to achieve with uh, one pair of wires as opposed to two. I want to do a little more dismantling before I cut the wires just to see how far back I can trace them. Opening up the electrical bay, if that's what it's called, I see that the two pairs of red wires here appear to go to here and appear to be these two wires down here so I can cut them to some place within the box. For each pair of wires I've cut one slightly shorter than the other so that when I tape them together it reduces the chance that there will be a short between the two wires. I think I'll be well served later by taking a few minutes now to label these wires that I've cut. I expect in a while it will all be a blur. Now the test. Start the bus and see if it still starts after cutting those wires. We may hear uh, a warning scream while uh, air pressure is being built up in the tank, but that's normal. There's the symbol that air pressure is low, and we can see here that air pressure is low, but it's building. So about here, about 60, 65 PSI, that warning light goes out and the alarm stops. And happily the bus starts despite having cut those wires. I'd like to see if I can completely remove this black metal assembly from the side of the bus. With four rusty Phillips head screws taken out, all that remains is the pneumatic hose holding the assembly to the bus. Okay, that's off, leaving an open end on a pneumatic hose exposed. My initial worry was that this would hemorrhage air and I couldn't maintain pressure in the tank, but I think air only comes out of this when the swing arm is deployed. And some entries I've seen at schoolie.net suggest it may be enough just to put a screw in here uh, to close off the pipe. I'm left with some bodywork to find a, an aesthetically pleasing way to close up those two holes. Let's start the bus to see if it's emerging air. The compressor is slowly building pressure in the tank. So there's no indication that we're losing air pressure as a result of this modification. 